Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on working with JSON files in Python. So here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. We'll begin by looking at what JSON is with some realistic examples, and then we'll go on to look at how you can write information out to JSON files called dumping it, and how you can read it back in, and that's called loading it. We'll look at how you can use dumps and loads to read and write to JSON strings. And then finally, we'll do a longer case study or example on working with the debug settings file to show how you can get at information in a JSON file. At any point, you'll be able to click on the link at the top right of the screen to download any files or exercises to do with this tutorial. And I think that's probably enough of me, so I'm going to vanish now as I tend to do at this point in a tutorial and hand control to, over control to Sven, who will reliably guide you through the rest of the tutorial. So let's get started. So we'll begin by looking at what a JSON file is. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is a way of storing information in a text format. It's exactly analogous to the older XML format. It's just really replaced that. So what I wanted to do is look at four examples of JSON files just to give you an idea of what they can, can, can contain. So this is a Visual Studio Code settings file. I'm actually looking at it in a different application, so don't worry about that. But you can recognize that it's a dictionary of settings for all the different things you can do in Visual Studio Code. So for example, it sets the color theme to Visual Studio Lite. Another example might be the debug launch file in Visual Studio Code. Again, this is stored in JSON uh, text format. Another completely different example might be a map file of all the counties in the United Kingdom. And this stores uh, map points of every single county. And it's quite a long file, as you might imagine. It's nearly 100,000 rows. And another example might be a theme for using in Power BI Desktop. And this controls how, by default, all the visuals you create will look. So you can see that JSON uh, text files can contain almost anything. I don't know if it's useful for an analogy, but let's look at this in terms of Star Trek. The process of creating uh, writing to and reading from a JSON file is called serialization and deserialization. And you can think of it as something like this. So you have the crew of the Star, Tech, Star Trek Enterprise sitting waiting to visit a different planet. They are like a collection of information on maps or Visual Studio Code settings or Power BI themes or whatever it may be you want to transmit to somebody else or some other computer program. To do that, you need to convert the live objects into basically zeros and ones or bits and in Star Trek, that's done using a transformer. I think that's what it's called. I have a horrible feeling I'm going to get lots of people complaining about the fact I haven't described what happens in Star Trek faithfully. Please don't, because that's not really the point of this tutorial. So the Star Trek uh, transformer is equivalent to a JSON, writing a JSON file. And what that does is translates the maps and code settings and themes or whatever may be into a text readable format, similar to the ones we've just looked at. At the other end, the Star Trek uh, voyages get transformed back. I think actually they've been transformed into completely different people, but that's some unfortunate. Uh, but they get transformed from their zeros and ones back into real people. And likewise, you can read a JSON file and convert them back into usable maps or settings or themes or whatever it may be. That's what's going on when you write to and read from a JSON file. So I've created a file called writingjsonfile.py, and what we're going to do first is use that to write out or dump out a, J a text to a JSON file. In order to be able to write information, I need to have something to write. So what I'm going to do is delve through my clipboard and see if I can find something, and happily I seem to have a list of Harry Potter's characters there. Uh, the first name, the last name, the house, and I'm not quite sure what that fourth field will be. Surely it can't be a rating. Hermione deserves more than that. So what we're now going to do is write that to a JSON file, and to do that, we need to import the JSON module. And like with CSV, it's a built-in module. There's no need to install anything, so that's good. What I'm now going to do is open up a file, as is so often the case, so I can say with open. I'll put in an R to make sure I don't have to escape my backspace characters. And then I will paste in the content of the clipboard. Actually, I won't. I'll paste in something previously I've used in the clipboard. And that will give me the file path. I need to specify one more thing. I need to say I'm writing to it rather than reading from it, which would have been the default. And the W will mean 
it's overwritten every time I run the program. A would have appended to it. So I can call that JSON file. And then I can dump out the Harry Potter info. And I've chosen the word dump quite advisedly because that's the name of the method we're about to use. So I'm going to take the JSON module. I'm going to apply the dump uh, method. If you're wondering what dumps is, read on or watch on. You will find out later in this tutorial. And first I'm going to say what I'm dumping, which is the list of characters. Now you can dump anything. You can dump, in fact, it's a tuple of characters. You can dump tuples, you can dump lists, you can dump dictionaries. You can dump dictionaries of lists of tuples. Provided it's expressible in Python, you can store it in JSON format. You'll just get an awful lot of indented brackets in your JSON file. So the next thing I'm going to um, specify is where I'm dumping it to. So I'm going to put the file path in. And I'll also say how many indents I want in my file. But you can see there's loads and loads of other um, ways you can configure writing to a JSON file to fine tune what you get. So I'll say with a file path, I presume that stands for, is the name of my file, which is JSON file. And I think I'll have four indents. That's it. That will create my JSON file. So if I now try running that program, you'll see it works. And it's created a JSON file over there. Now, if you were eagle-eyed, you'd actually see that this file already existed. So just in case you think I'm fixing this, let's delete that and run the program again. And it will recreate the file. So there's no fix. It really is creating it. And what you can see is it's taken this and stored it with, uh, mostly with square brackets. And this is what I talked about with serialization. And what we're now going to do is look at how you can read that back in or deserialize it back into the objects in Python. So having created a file called sortinghat.json with the previous part of the tutorial, what we're now going to do is read that back into whatever object is constructed. So to do this, I can firstly read in the file. So I can say with open, and I can specify my file name. I just need some quotes around that. And I don't need to specify the R because that's the default, but I will do anyway. And I'll call that JSON file. I will read it in. And to load up a JSON file, you literally, in fact, I suppose I need a comment for this, load JSON data into variable. I literally take the name of a variable. Let's call it um, Potter people. I set that equal to uh, JSON. Now I haven't imported the JSON module, so I need to do that now before I do anything else. And then I will be able to say json.load. And then I can specify the file I'm loading it from, which is JSON file. And again, there's lots of other information I can specify, but I don't need to because I wrote it out in a fairly standard way. So we'll read it back in a fairly standard way too. <clears throat> so to see if that's worked, I can now print out the Potter people variable. And what you should see is you haven't quite got back what you wrote out. So when we wrote this out, we had a tuple of a tuple. And what we've got back is a list of a list. So it slightly changed the data structure for us, but that's OK. And if I wanted to be uh, more specific, I could, for every single item I brought back, I could print out the first and last name of the Harry Potter character. So I could say for each character in my Potter people, what I could do is print out first and last name. And to do that, I'm going to use quite an elegant way of using a space as a uh, joining character to join the first two elements of the list. So I'm going to take a slicer, which will go from the first character and stop just before the third. That will pick out the first two bits. So for example, for the first row, it will take Hermione and Granger. For the second row, it will take Draco and Malfoy, etc. So I should just get a list of people's names. And if I run that program, you'll see that that's exactly what happens. So that's how you can read information back in from a JSON file. Let's now have a look at the difference between load and loads and dump and dumps. So I've talked about load versus loads and dump versus dumps. Let's see what the difference actually is. I think loads and dumps are less useful, but again, judge for yourself. 
So I've got a string of Potter characters, the same as before, so you can just copy and paste it. And I definitely will need to import the JSON module. This time, I won't forget. So what I'm going to do is to write out these characters to JSON. But instead of using a file as I did before, I'm just going to use the string variable. So I'm going to create a variable called character, characters. And I'm going to take the JSON module. And this time, I'm going to apply the dumps method. And the thing I'm dumping out is a list of Potter characters. And the arguments I can specify are pretty much identical to the ones for a file. The difference is where it puts the information. So that will write to a string variable. It will serialize it to a string variable if you want to show off. And to prove this has worked, let's just print that out. So if I now run that program, you'll see it prints out a string representation of my uh, objects. And that's all the dumps does. And what I could do, then do is read this back in. And this is the exact inverse. So I'll create another variable called, variable called Potter characters. I'm running out of variable names here. And to do this, I'll take JSON. I will use the loads method. And this will take a string variable. You can see it's asking for that at the top. I'll take in the characters. And what it will do is deserialize that and reconstruct my object. So to test this works, I'll print out two things. I'll print out the type of the variable just to see what it's given us. And I'll print out the variable itself. So if we read that, you'll see it's returned a list. So again, it's converted what was a tuple into a list. And it shows me what that list contains. So there's no real difference between uh, load and loads and dump and dumps, except that one writes information and reads it back from a file, and the other writes it to and reads it back from a string variable. So although I think you know all the theory about JSON, I think it's worth doing a practical example of how you can get information out of a real JSON file. What we're going to do is have a look at the debug settings in your uh, Visual Studio code. You've almost certainly got a .vs code folder at the top, and that will contain a file called launch.json. If you haven't got one, try debugging your program by pressing the F5 key, and that should create it automatically. And if you want to see more about debugging, watch a separate earlier tutorial on debugging. So what I want to do is get information from that. Specifically, I want to get the just my code setting, which I've chosen pretty much at random. So what I'm going to do is copy this and then paste it into my folder for this tutorial, just so one doesn't interfere with the other. So I'll now close down the original. And what I want to do is to read this in. Now I predict that when I do this, I'll have problems with the comments and I'll have to get rid of them. But let's see how it goes. So I've created a file called example debug settings.py. And what I'm going to do is load up that file into a variable. So the first thing I need to do is import the JSON module. I'll read in the JSON debug settings file. So to do this, I can say with open and then paste in the name or folder path of the file, which is that. And I'll call that uh, settings file. So what I can now do is load that up. Do that, I can create a variable. I'm going to call it settings. And I can take the JSON module and choose the load uh, method and load up the contents of the settings file. See what we've got. So I'm going to print out the settings. And what you should see is um, it crashes. And it crashes because it's expecting a property name enclosed in double quotes in line 2, column 5. Well, let's have a look at line 2, column 5, shall we? If you go to the file and have a look at line 2, which is that one there, column 5, I reckon it's that forward slash. It doesn't understand it. And that's because JSON files can't contain comments. I never quite know how Microsoft have got around this. They must have some internal JSON reader which somehow strips out the comments before processing them. So what I'm going to have to do is delete the comments and save that. And let's try again. So this time when I run it, you can see it does actually print out the settings. And it's converted it into a dictionary. The keys are these. I'm highlighting them. 
And the values, that's the first one. The second one is somewhat longer. I think it's all of that. So what I want to do is get at the configuration setting. But to take this slowly, let's actually check that I am getting a dictionary. So if I print out the type of it only, you'll see it does return a dictionary. So what I can then do is I'm going to set a configurations uh, variable to hold the item in the dictionary corresponding to that key. It's case sensitive, so hopefully I spe spelt it right. And then we can print out what that will give us. So that should just give us one entry in the dictionary. And if I run it, you'll see that's what it's got. Now at this point, it's tempting to think I've got another dictionary. And you have, but is embedded within square brackets. So what you've actually got is a list with a single item within it. And that single item is a dictionary. So it's not quite as straightforward as it might have been. And you learn in Python to keep your eye out very closely for which sort of brackets you're looking at. So to get at this, what I'm going to have to do firstly is to create a variable, I'll call it real config, rather than the artificial one I was looking at earlier, just to say you're taking the first and the only element in the list. I presume there's some situations where you might have other elements in the list. I don't know enough about debug configurations to know that. And then if I print out the type of that, you can see that this is a dictionary. So what I can then do is find out the setting I want. So I'll print out, hopefully everyone's still keeping up with me here. I'll print out the value of that. That's what my dictionary looks like. And I said I wanted to get to the just my code setting. So what I can do is inspect that key. I'll call it JM, JMC for just my code. And I can set that to be the element in the dictionary with key name. Whoops, I'll have to do it from memory, just my code. And then I can print out the value of it. So I burrowed down through my JSON file to get that this is false. And presumably what I could then do is set it to true, build up a dictionary and a list and all the other bits I needed and write, dump that back out to my settings file to make my change. But I think I've proved my point, so I, I think we'll stop there. Uh, and that's how you can work with JSON files in Python.